Did anyone else notice that Aguchi has zero penalty minutes? He's a lover, not a fighter. He's a Japanese beauty. Plus, he's 5'9", 140 pounds, so I don't think there's really a lot of muscle to throw around there to get a penalty. Japanese are a very friendly type of people. To Kapokako or to not Kapokako? That is the question. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to your Saskatchewan Stags franchise mode. Now, this is the fourth time I have recorded this entire video because I do the intro, I get talking about trades, and then I get stuck. I don't know what to do. I have no idea idea what to do regarding Kapokako. Well, I have a better idea now that I've been sitting here for almost two hours. Usually after a video, you kind of have a good sense of what you're going to do in the next one regarding the comments, but the comments were all over the place. You was like 33% this way, 33% that way, 33% the other way, upside down, up and around. I don't know what to do in this video. However, I have broke it down enough to where I think I have a decent idea, and it's kind of throwing a curveball. It's not regarding Perfetti, it's not regarding Kapokako, it's regarding something else, and it's something that I think we have to address, even though I don't want to. It's... It's going to be tough. Now, before we go over some comments, we also have to figure out what we're going to do in the month of March, that damned cursed month of March. We're actually 2-0 so far in this month, and we have a nice little cushion, a small cushion, but it's a nice one here. We have 80 points, uh, and the Chicago Blackhawks and the Colorado Avalanche, as well as the Dallas Stars, they are right on our tail. So. Not only do we have to worry about this Capocaco deal, we also have to worry about the damn month of March. But we're 2-0, we have a nice little cushion here, we're 7-3-0 in our last 10. So hopefully we can figure out what we're going to do regarding these trades, get the year done, and coast off into the postseason for the first time with your Saskatchewan Stags. So we got a comment here from the assistant coach himself, Brandon Barenfeld, absolute legend. He writes a novel. I'm not going to read the entire thing. I'm just going to highlight a couple points. He starts it off by saying, it's a very tough call for this one. I have very mixed feelings about it. He goes on to say that on the other hand, you said that Capocaco is listed as a first liner, which means he needs to play on the first line. Otherwise, he'll go back down and overall in a year or two. You have no ability to play him where he's most comfortable and happy because you have Sujimoto and Hiroyuki on your first line wing positions and there's no way you could move either one down. So you were to get him and continue to play him on the second line, yes he'd be good for right now but in a year or two he'd be back down to 85 or 84 where he wouldn't put up the numbers he's capable of putting up. Not to mention Perfetti is someone who could probably fit in your team in the next couple of years. I agree! I agree with my assistant coach! He's for sure going to be 87, 88, maybe even 89 overall. There's no way, there's no way we can comfortably play this guy on the second line. Not only that, we have to worry about our cap situation because he's going to want some big boy bucks and we have to pay some big boy bucks. Let's say Hiroyuki, he's going to want what? 9 million. We also have to pay Aguchi in a couple years. He's going to want 10, 12. Bowen Byram as well, Cole Perfetti eventually, Justin Falk we have to resign. Like, there's a lot of players we got to pay a lot of money to, plus Chubby, plus Big Germ. I don't think going out and getting a potential another 8 or $9 million guy to play on our second line is really that smart. So, now let's talk about the other thing that came up, which I kind of haven't hinted at at all. I knew it was going to happen, and I'm going to call it the Ryan Paling effect. It happened in Seattle. We had Ryan Paling. He burst on the scene, scored 50 goals, was a guy kind of came out of nowhere, and just like that, within two or three seasons, he went up from an 80 to like an 86, 87, 88, and then boom, all of a sudden, he was like 82 overall, and and we were out of a top six winger. Now, I'm scared that's going to happen with Michael Dal Cole. I'm not scared. I'm pretty certain it's going to happen. Elijah Nurse, he says, if you trade for Kako, trade Dal Cole in a pick for him. Dal Cole declines back to an 80 or under at the start of next season. Keep Perfetti. And Blaze, he says, at this point value and overall, it would be wise to trade Dal Cole for an elite. He doesn't say what, but he says an elite, while his trade value is still comparable. I agree with you. I like Michael Dal Cole. I like the opportunity that we gave him. I like that he took it. I like that he's an 88 overall, but just knowing the game, He's going to drop down to like an 80. It's not going to be pretty. 
Now, what can we do about Michael Dalgol? Now, I really like him. He's best friends with Anthony Sorelli. I don't want to trade him, but just the way the game is, I will be very, very, very surprised if he stays at an 88 overall. I highly, highly doubt he will. I have a feeling he's going to jump down to like an 83 overall, which really is going to screw us because we can't be out of a top six forward just like that. Plus, his trade value is so high. I don't want to do it, but I think we might have to. Now, since I've already recorded this video three or four times and wasted the last two hours of my life, I kind of already have an idea of what's out there. Trust me, I've went through every single team three or four times over. Now, I should apologize about, about my voice once again. I've waited to record this, but I don't want to wait any longer. I'm still sick. I probably should be resting, but I'm all about the stags, and I really, really want to record because sitting at home doing nothing, I'd rather make some content and especially having a lot of fun with the stags. So, Michael Dalgol, what are are we going to do? Now, there's a few options. We could go back to Winnipeg and go after a guy like Kyle Connor, who is 87 overall. He's going to make, a, you know, a good chunk of change. Nothing crazy. He's not in the eight or nine million dollars like Capocacco will be, uh, but he's still really, really good. Now, the problem with Kyle Connor is they're playing him on the third line. We would give this guy legitimate minutes where he should be playing. He's 25 years old, 87 overall. He's under contract for the next two years at 5.6 which is definitely doable I like that a lot so that guy is definitely on my radar plus they need to move a winger now if Michael Dalgol ends up going down he might be the perfect third liner for the Winnipeg Jets so it kind of makes sense and I think we could trade for Kyle Connor relatively cheaply is cheaply a word? I don't know. Relatively cheap. Now, while I was perusing around the National Hockey League, I saw that Matthew Barzell was traded to the Washington Capitals. So you got a line of Barzell, Ovechkin, and who else? Like, who's nets off? That's insane. That's going to be ridiculous. So we got to have a look at that trade. I'd like to, I'm very interested to see what the trade was. That's a blockbuster move. And for some reason, Florida wants to get rid of Oscar Gormley. So I don't know about that. But the players I had my eyes on, now I had a couple of players in mind. Now, one of them was Andreas Janssen. However, that guy was like on the very bottom of my list. He's good. Don't get me wrong. He's really good. Um, but I think we can make something work with the Carolina Hurricanes once again. Another team that we're going to make a trade with. Now, this has been a team we've dealt Adam Larson to. We ended up getting a lottery pick out of them. So we're kind of abusing the system a little bit by trading a player who might drop for a top six player. Now, it's not Quinton Byfield, it's not Sebastian Ajo, it's not Vinny Zapp, it's not Evans, it's not Duchesne, it's Tara Vinen, baby. Now, he's 90 overall, which seems very, very high for Tara Vinen, and it is. But I think morale has a lot to do with this. I think he's going to be more of an 87, 88 overall guy. Now, don't get me wrong, that's still worthy of first line minutes. But I think once we trade for him, he comes back down to earth. Maybe he'll drop down to 87, 88 overall, which is kind of perfect for the second line wing. In my eyes, anyways. He's having a phenomenal year this year. 60 points in 63 games. He's killing it. Almost had a point per game last year. Now, the trade value we're going to have to add a little bit, where I think if we trade for Kyle Connor, it would be just a basically a straight trade. However, I would like to get this trade done as opposed to Kyle Connor. Kyle Connor's kind of my backup. Uh, we'll see what we can do here. I'll add a second and a fourth, a fourth from next year. We'll see where that's kind of at here. Um, it looks even-ish. I think it's still a little bit in our favor. I'll see if it'll go through. We'll have to work on it. If I can't make it go through, I'm going to go ahead and go check out Kyle Connor from the Winnipeg Jets. But Michael Dalgol, man, it's been a ride. I don't want to do this, but I know it's going to be the Ryan Paling effect, unfortunately. I would love to keep you. I know Anthony Sorelli is going to be really upset, but, but hockey is a business. We're not here to make friends. I've kind of helped you you know solidify yourself as a top six forward now if you stay 88 overall I'm gonna be very upset with myself but I don't think you're going to I have a feeling you're gonna drop and that's unfortunately gonna be stuck on Carolina once again so will this trade go through they want Michael Dalgol they want the fourth will this go through Tara Vinen are you gonna be a member of the Saskatchewan Stags no okay interesting they said no 
Your offer is woefully insufficient. Okay, I didn't think it was that bad, but let's see. I don't really want to give up any prospects either, so I'm going to try to stay away from that if I can. All right, so let's see if this will go through. A second, a defenseman we got in the fourth round. I'm going to go ahead and replace him with another prospect here. This guy is 21 years old, 67 overall, a fourth rounder. So we're basically swapping fourth rounders for fourth rounders. A second and a third for Tara Vinen. Will this trade go through? Trade rejected. Okay, so it's going to have to be more picks because I can't really trade any more players. I don't really want to trade prospects. So... Another third? Should I add two thirds and a second? Oof, that's a lot. If this doesn't go through, I'm going to go check out Kyle Connor. But we're basically playing with house money with Michael Dell Gold, which is something that I talk about a lot, playing with free money. But it does make a lot of sense. So this is going to be my final offer for Terra Vine, and I don't want to give up much more. Will this go through? Trade rejected. Okay, all right. No problem. I guess it kind of makes sense because we fleeced you guys once, not on purpose, obviously, with the whole draft pick that turned out to be a Gucci. Thanks, by the way. Appreciate it. So I guess they don't want to do business with us. It makes sense. So could we get Michael Dow Cole straight up for Kyle Connor? Will this trade go through? Trade rejected. Okay, so I knew we were going to have to add a little bit, which I'm totally comfortable with. If we have to add a fourth and a fifth this year, I mean, we don't really have a ton of picks anyways, so why not? Let's add a fourth and a fifth. Will this go through for Kyle Connor? Trade rejected. Sweeten it just a touch. All right, so this thing is definitely, definitely going through. What if I just made it a, I don't know why I got rid of that. We'll go ahead and throw in Edmonton seventh. So a bunch of picks and Michael Del Goal for Kyle Connor. Michael Del Goal, I'm sorry. I know it happens if you're not familiar with this. Basically, sometimes in franchise mode, when a player jumps up to be really, really high overall, when they don't have the potential, he'll drop back down to earth. Because right now, Michael Del Goal is playing with the potential. He has maybe medium elite, medium top six, not so much a medium top nine. So I think we're going to cash in right now. Kyle Connor, welcome to the Saskatchewan Stags. No, never mind. Okay, trade rejected once again. All right, what if I made that a fifth? You said sweeten it just a touch. That's just a touch. Come on, Kyle Connor. Just, that is a touch. What do you mean? How many draft picks do you want? Okay, you squeeze an extra fifth out of me. Come on, that should go through. Stop being greedy, Kevin Shevel Day off. Trade for check. It's a bit low. You say sweeten it just a touch? Give me a break. All right, I'll throw a third in from 2024. You got to wait for that draft pick. There you go. I am happy to accept this proposal on behalf of the Winnipeg Jets, and we consider it a done deal. I know. I'm sorry. I don't feel good about it. I didn't want to trade Michael Dalgo. I didn't want to do it. It makes sense, unfortunately. It's just something that had to be done. I'm sorry. I know I'm going to get it in the comments. So I was speaking to the assistant GMs, and they kind of helped me out with this trade. So shout out to the assistant GM group chat we got. It makes sense. I know Michael Dalgola was a great story, but unfortunately, I think it just had to be done. We get to hang on to Profetti. We didn't have to pay a ton. Michael Dalgola, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. It just just had to happen. Now, Cal Connor was getting shit ice over there in Winnipeg. He only has 34 points on the year, but he was playing on the third line. So we're definitely going to give him the proper amount of ice and we're going to get this thing underway. My voice is dying at this point. Oh my God. I sound like I've been smoking for a hundred years. So let's go ahead and get this year done. I really want to focus on winning a bunch of hockey games. We have no choice but to win, win, win. W-I-N every single night. Do we have any games against the Winnipeg Jets? Uh, none right now. So we'll have to keep a close look on that. I'm also going to keep checking in if Michael Dow goal drops. Because if he stays at an 88 overall, I'll be pretty impressed. However, I don't think... That's the case. I don't think he's going to stay 88 overall at all. I think he's going to drop. He's going to drop fast. Let's go period number one against the Vegas Golden Knights. And it's four to two. Yikes. Okay, Hiroyuki and Jesper Fast. That's good, I guess. But then Hoffman, Pacioretty, Stone, and Lafreniere. 
Okay, period number two. Okay, all right, Sujimoto gets two. Jonathan Marcheseau gets one to put them ahead by one. It's a 5-4 game. Come on, boys, we need the victory. This has to be easy points. The Golden Knights have a terrible record. We need this victory. Come on. There you go, Sujimoto with the hat trick. That's a natural hat trick, baby. We need these points. We need them. Come on. Kyle Connor. Kyle freaking Connor with three minutes left gets the game winning goal. What a debut for the Saskatchewan Stags. Unbelievable. You absolutely love to see it. Three goals for Sujimoto, three points for Hiroyuki, and that is a G W G for Kyle Connor. How you doing, buddy? You think you're going to like playing in Saskatchewan? I think so. All right, so what I'm going to do here is check out that huge trade that happened with Matthew Barzell. Let's have a quick look here. So there's the Michael Dow goal trade, which I know, I'm sorry in the comments. I'm sorry already. I know there was a big Michael Dow goal fan club. So Matt Duchesne went to Carolina. So we kind of already saw that without realizing it. Boston got Ryan Dezingle. Uh, they shipped out Malcolm Subban once again. The Islanders got Ilya Samsonov, Thomas Lander, and two, I guess, picks or prospects for Matthew Barzell, a second, and two other things. So Ilya Samsonov has a ton of trade value. And that Thomas Lander guy, I think he was... Was he? Hold on, I gotta see. I gotta see, what pick was he? Maybe not right after Perfetti, but pretty damn close. Oh no, he must have been after, because he just doesn't have that high of trade value. 17th overall. That's right, I remember this guy. Uh, so 72 overall, Thomas Lander. They're actually playing him in the NHL. They threw him up there for one game. Okay, interesting. And Ilya Samsonov, he was that goalie that had a ton of trade value. There he is. So that's a starting goalie being moved. So that's a pretty big trade. Who do you think wins that deal, though? I think I might give the advantage to Washington there. It's not a ton to pay for an absolute stud. So let's keep on with... With the W's here, so far we're 3-0 in March, which is a good thing. This is a month we haven't had a ton of luck in, and there you go. There's, of course, a loss, as I mentioned it. Big 7-6 win there. Another big win. You absolutely love to see it. March is... March ain't nothing. Bring it on, March. Bring it on, baby. 43-22-3. We have only lost once in overtime in the last couple of games. We're on a heater right now. We're currently 8-0-1 going back here to this uh, Montreal game. So we are on a heater right now. The boys are buzzing up against the Chicago Blackhawks. The return of Adam Boquist. Oh, my God. I need, I need a drink. Hold on. I don't know how many slow sim games I'm going to do because I don't think my voice can handle it. But let's go here up against the Chicago Blackhawks, period. Number one, and it's 2-1. All right, Aguchi, he scores Drake Kajula and Patty Kane, period. Number two, ooh, yikes, we're getting crushed. All right, let's go ahead and just burn the tape. Chubby gets one. We end up pulling Big Germ. Not a great game against the Hawks. Now, we got to be careful because we have 89 points. It's actually a good cushion. It's a good cushion. Um, we're not out of the woods yet. I still i am a little bit nervous. I'm going to slow sim, I think, three or four games at a time. And then we'll, uh, we'll have a look to see where we're at in the standings. I'm not going to be happy until the regular season is over, until we have confirmed a playoff spot, but we are playing some unreal hockey right now. We are just killing it, wins after wins. That loss against Chicago shook the boys up a little bit, but nothing to worry about. Okay, you know, we lose there against the uh, lose there against the Carolina Hurricanes. They have a pretty good squad, though. So does Vancouver. Come on, guys. There you go, big win. Pittsburgh's got a... Pittsburgh's got a pretty good record. That's a huge win. Ilya Samsonov and the 18-52-5 Islanders. That's a huge win. you love to see it. All right, 99 points. I think, I'm not going to say it, but I think we're okay. I think we should be in the playoffs here. I think. I hope. I think. Come on, let's go. Come on, Big Germ. I need you here, buddy. Going into April, we need some big wins. There's a win. There's another win. The boys are on fire right now. Now, I did write down Kyle Connor's stats. Obviously, I want to see how good he played coming to his new team. Up against the Stars. That's a big win. All right, we got a battle of the Titans here. Two of the NHL's best, Saskatchewan and Tampa Bay. Let's go. The last slow sim game of this episode, period. Number one. 
and it's 2-2. All right, Sujimoto and Aguchi, the Japanese boys are out to play. Andre Pilat and Mikhail Sergachev, period number two. All right, 3-3. Braden Shen, the captain, gets us tied up here. Tyler Johnson had another one. Tying the game up at three. Shots are pretty even. There's Braden Shen, the captain. There you go, getting another one. You absolutely love to see it. Against former teammate. Actually, they never played together, Yaro Halak. Former Saskatchewan stag, Yaro Halak. Is that going to be enough to hold off the Tampa Bay Lightning? Nikita Kucherov, Steven Stamko, see you later, baby. That's a huge two points. All right, the last game of the regular season. I'm pretty confident right now that we're in the playoffs. I'm pretty confident, so let's go ahead and get this last game done against the Buffalo Sabres. Not Buffalo Sabres, sorry. What am I talking about? The Boston Bruins, and we lose 5-1. to one. My voice is dying. I'm dying. I don't know what's going on. Come on, boys. The playoffs. Please, God, the playoffs. I think we played well enough to be in a playoff position. Absolutely. 109 points. Sujimoto, 50 goals, 96 points. How are ya? We made the freaking playoffs. Oh my god. Thank the hockey gods. We did it, baby. The postseason. And oh my god. These things just write themselves. These things just write themselves. This is straight out of a storybook. You got the return of Michael Dell goal the return of Kyle Connor meeting up in round one of the postseason it doesn't get any better than this unbelievable all right so let's have a quick little overview of the year let's see how everyone finished and yeah very interesting it's gonna be a very fun playoff run Sujimoto 54 goals let me just read that one more time. Sujimoto, 54 goals. How are you? What a year for the guy. That's three straight years with over 90 points. This guy is a bonafide stud. S-T-U-D. Hiroyuki with 95 points. Unbelievable. The boys were coming out to play this year. Braden Shen with 80. I believe he had 81 last year. Yeah, so that's three straight years of 80 points or more. Absolute stud. Just Mr. Consistency. Now, Aguchi, what a year he had. Aguchi, what a rookie year. 45 Genos, 78 points, plus 20. Adam Boquist with 77 points. Don't call him Ray Bork. Oh, my God. Thank you very much, Chicago. Thank you very, very, very much. You're going to get a Christmas card. What a year. This guy could very well win the Norris Trophy. Unreal. Chubby, 65 points, almost 30 goals. We got 29, so a definite improvement on last year. Now, Ilya Kovalchuk, even though he's all the way down at a 77 overall, he had 63 points, so you can't hate on that at all. So Kyle Connor actually played pretty damn good. He had 19 points in 19 games, three goals, but 16 assists. So maybe playing with Chubby, maybe he had a few more goals since playing with Kyle Connor. I think Kyle Connor's gonna fit in great here. There you go, Kyle Connor, what a beauty. Dougie Hamilton, 52, Justin Falk, 51. So a lot of guys getting a lot of points this year. Yes, we're fast, killer. Tyler Benson there with 28, Colton Sissons, 26. Bowen Byram there, steady as can be. Connor Murphy, Michael Kempney, there you go. Now as for goalies, here's the big thing here. Big germ, 40 and 21. You can't hate on that. Two shutouts, three overtime losses. Honestly, a very good year for big germ. Jimmy Howard went 13 and 7, not bad either. Now I forget how many points Michael Dalgol had when we traded him, but can someone go back and check? Uh, where is he here? He had 66 points, so I think he had 52, is that right? 52? I don't know, I could be wrong, could be wrong, but he dropped down to an 87, so there you go, he's already declining. But seriously, I like Michael Del Cole a lot, I wish we could have kept him, but it was for the best, it's for the best for the franchise, and here you go. What's done is done, we got a first round matchup, and Patrick Laine had 67 goals, oh my god. All right, here you go. You guys want points? You got points. Hulkenberg, 58 goals, 67 apples, 125 points. As for goals, obviously it's going to be Patrick Laine, 67. 
Okay, and we have to face him in the first round. Not super pumped on that. Oscar Gormley with 63 goals. Once again, a 60-goal performance back-to-back -back years. Looking like a former Florida Panther named Pavel Bure getting back-to-back 60-goal -back years. What a guy. So, like, Mark Shifley, like, Patrick Laine. God, we're going to have a... Gonna have a tough first round here, my god. Uh, Jonathan Drewan up there, Sidney Crosby still killing it, 34 years old, cracking the 100 point plateau. A lot of 50 goal scorers as well. How many this year? Uh, oh my god, so many 50 goal scorers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 50 goal scorers this year. That's wild. All right, so the race for the Calder Trophy, we all knew it was kind of over come January when we saw that Nikita Solani was well over a point per game. How did he finish? 49 goals, 96 points. So, yep, he's taking home the Calder, that's for sure. What a beast. Oh, my God. Aguchi behind him there with 76. Lafreniere with 75. Cole Lind, Vancouver Canucks draft pick, 59 points. Uh, Jesper Boquist, not Adam Boquist, 57 points. Michael Hutchinson apparently is the best goalie in the entire world. And then big Jeremy Tamlin, third in wins. Actually tied for second, but not a bad year. I'm very, very happy with big Germ. I'm... I'm feeling confident for the future. He's going to be the guy to lead us to the promised land. We ended up leapfrogging the Winnipeg Jets, which was great, but now we got to play him in the first round, which is going to be a battle of the Titans. But here's how everyone else finished. Tampa, Nashville, we finished number three. Winnipeg finished number four. It's going to be a tough, tough series. Who finished last here, just for fun? Just so we can laugh at them in the comments. The Los Angeles Kings went 19 and 57. Jesus, that is like historically bad. Here's the playoff tree. We got Michael Dalgol versus Kyle Connor. That's going to be a fun, fun series. A very hard series, but I'm excited for it. We got Line and Shifley versus the Japanese. It's going to be a hell of a playoffs here. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry you had to listen to me go back and forth on what we're going to do, what we're not going to do. Also, apologize about my voice because I sound absolutely terrible right now. I think I'm going to die. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in round one against the Winnipeg Jets. I'm sorry, Michael Dalgol. I'm sorry I had to trade you. It's going to be a fun one. I'll see you guys then.